love a good moon. I really do. I feel like it's important that you know that before I start this video. Moons forever. Titan is an absolute corker of a moon. It orbits the planet Saturn along with 61 other moons. Moon gang. While that sounds like a lot, Titan is the biggest of them all. The moon daddy. 1.4 billion kilometers away from the world we know and love, planet Earth, could Titan sustain life? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that loves to take the time to think about everything and anything. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today I'm asking, can we live on Titan? What a question. Before we get into this video, I want you to let me know if you think the moon has an effect on us humans. Do you think a full moon makes us crazy? Let me know in the comments section down below. Also, while you're down there, why don't you leave a thumbs up on this video and share it with a friend. Also check out the links in the description box to our social media. Stick around to the end of the video where we will be reading comments from a previous big question. So, Titan. Before we get into the specifics of Titan, let's talk about what humans need to survive. I'm not even talking like live comfortably here because an enjoyable life is a whole different ball game to survival. Basically, to not die, humans have five key needs. Oxygen, water, food, shelter and sleep. But also, things are more complicated than that. We need temperature to be right, we need the water to be alkaline, we need sunlight. We would really struggle with much more or much less gravity. We need an atmosphere to protect us from radiation. And and that's without creature comforts and entertainment to stop us going mad. So, if this is a survival dating profile, would we be swiping left or right to Titan? That was cringe, but do you know what? I'm not gonna unsay it. Number one of our survivability checklist is oxygen. The bad news is, is that Titan doesn't have any breathable oxygen, which, well, really isn't great. But but it seems that things can change. There is oxygen on the planet in the form of ice as well as liquid water under the surface, so we could in theory generate breathable air. Okay, next, water. Well, as discussed, there is some evidence of liquid water as we know it on Titan, but how much, we just don't know, and it is a pretty damn key requirement for life. Interestingly, there are lakes, a lot like Earth lakes on Titan, but they're made up from liquid methane and ethane. It also rains the same two chemicals from the sky, which could be a problem for our soft, corruptible human skin. Again, we could mine water, but would there be enough? Also, without a ready supply of oxygen and water, how are we gonna do the whole food thing? Farming would be pretty darn hard. The answer to life on Titan would be shelter. In theory, if we could erect shelter, generate water and breathable air to supply us and create a farming dome of some kind, then maybe we could survive. Although, doesn't that sound like a lot of effort for something that seems so, well, effortless on Earth? The living and farming domes aren't a bad shout. There are a couple of key features also that make Titan pretty attractive, should we so wish to make the effort. Firstly, there is plenty of nitrogen, ammonia, methane and hydrocarbons that can be used to generate crazy energy. There's more potential fuel on Titan than there is here on Earth, although what would we do with it all at the beginning? So assuming we could get a good night's sleep in our Titan dome homes, I feel like we have covered the big five, and although it is a bit of an effort, if we had the resources to set up on Titan then we surely could live there, indoors. But what about going outside? Well we already know that we can't breathe oxygen naturally, so we would need some kind of supply with us. But Titan does have something pretty cushy, it has an atmosphere which solves the issue of dodging solar rays. We could go outside without needing pressure suits, although we couldn't expose our skin. Why? Well, it is freaking cold on Titan. Minus 180 degrees Celsius slash minus 291 degrees Fahrenheit to be precise. No more beach vacations, simulated vacations in domes only. Although, maybe when we've set up, we could go on moon trips to Saturn's other satellites. On the entertainment front, sure, we might not be able to Netflix and chill immediately, but as the gravity is much lighter on Titan, it is similar to our moons. It means that actually we might be able to fly using custom wings. Yes, I'm just gonna give you a second to digest that. Humans could fly. Another big bonus also would be seeing freaking Saturn in our sky. That would be, I mean, pretty wild, right? It would take up a huge chunk of the skyline and actually maybe one day we could go on adventures to the gas giant. So yeah, Titan, a bit of a struggle on the water and oxygen front. It is super, super cold and we would have to live in domes, but on the plus side, great energy resources, great views, and we might be able to fly a bit. Perhaps over time, humans would accept and adapt to life.
life on Titan. But for now, I do have to say, our best place on mass is beautiful, beautiful planet Earth, and we should look after it. So guys, what do you think to this? Would you like to live on Titan? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget our question for this video. Do you think the moon has an effect on us? I want to know all of your thoughts. Now, before I go, I'm just going to read some comments from one of my most recent videos. This was a hard hitter. It was, what if PewDiePie didn't exist? Dagon Ward said, then we would send that alternative timeline to the ranch and move to a timeline where PewDiePie does exist. Right, you could have saved me around eight minutes of talking. King Walt said, what if T-Series dropped a diss track on PewDiePie? I for one actually would be very, very there for that, just, you know, for the banter. Old Man Mammoth said, if PewDiePie didn't exist, then Kaiser Wilhelm the Great would have won the First World War and also use Rasputin to turn the Earth's oceans into a breeding ground for an army of clones of Macho Man Randy Savage in order to defeat the cyborg Theodore Roosevelt and his army of Robo Scorpions. Good, I love a sensical answer. And to be fair, it was a bit of a nonsensical question, so I appreciate it. So guys, do let me know all of your thoughts on this video, and again, don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video, share it with a friend, check out the links in the description box. I'm your host, Rebecca Felgate, I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, stay curious, stay alert, and never ever stop questioning. Mm -hmm.